you carefully read Dr. Jai Shankar's book, The India Way, you will see in there his proposal that India should play a shaping role in the global order, partly as a voice for the global south, but for other reasons as well. The reaction in China to Dr. Shank Dr. Jai Shankar's book is very negative. They don't like the idea that India could play a role speaking for the global south. They believe that's China's responsibility. So this challenge between the, for the future of the India-China relationship, that's something I wish I had devoted more time to uh, many years ago. But I now see India as the world's chance to be sure that China does not become a dominant aggressive and dictatorial society. That's interesting. I also see we have a bit of a mutual admiration club here. Uh, Dr. Pillsbury, when he came yesterday, carried uh, Dr. Jai Shankar's book, uh, The India Way. And uh, I just heard from Dr. Jai Shankar before we started the session that in the last several years, he's probably gifted more copies of your book than anybody else. So you got a good uh, representative here because he wants people to read what you're writing. In fact, the very interesting thing, and I want to refer to some parts of uh, the India we, way. We do need, we need to give both the books to Rahul Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> now, the very interesting thing about uh, the India way, and I refer to this just for those who haven't had the opportunity to read Dr. Jai Shankar's book, is that you have a theorist, you have a strategic affairs expert who's also shaping India's foreign policy. And so much of what I grew up reading and so many other people would have read Western thought or Chinese thought, but you're not really linking back the strategic acumen from the Arthashastra, the Mahabharata, Rama, and bringing it to an Indian doctrine, an Indian strategic way of thinking, which is what Dr. Jay Shankar tries to do. So, and it's also a great opportunity to engage and debate and challenge you. Uh, to some questions about balance of power. In the US, elsewhere, Russia, Beijing, uh, there's a lot of thought in balance of power. And national security doctrines are well documented, public documents which can be debated and discussed. In India, it stays largely within cupboards in South Bloc, it's not public. I want your assessment, Dr. Jay Shankar, about India's comprehensive national power at this moment and your projection of the climb. If you were to ra rank countries, where do you think India stands at this moment in terms of its comprehensive national power? Where do you see it by the end of this decade? You know, uh, first of all, I, I just want to pick up a little bit on, on what you were saying, which is to develop our own, draw on our own traditions you know, develop our own narratives, arguments, etc. Because when I when you speak about comprehensive national power, I mean, in a sense, there are a certain set of metrics that we take, and uh, I I mean, I I think nobody would dispute the fact that there are many areas, many domains where we have fallen short. We could have done very much better over many years, and I see today, uh, you know, this country. This country, I say, I mean, not necessarily this government doesn't have to be a political party. This entire country actually today making that effort. You know, as someone who travels around, I, you know, for me, it's a very small change, but a very important change I see. When you go to many educational institutions today in India, I go as a minister, they would normally say, this is the gold medalist of our university. Today, they actually say, you know, these four people, they are patent holders from our institution. These five people, you know, they have inventions they would like to show you. So this country, this society is changing, the younger generation even more so. And we are getting very, very global, much faster than people think. So I am finding, you know, before I came in here, your social media person asked me saying, you know, you are, you are very visible on the social media. It's not because the foreign minister is doing something different alone. It's also because the society has changed and is relating and interacting with that in a very different way. Your question, where do we go? Look, I am absolutely, I, I, I where think- Where stand at this moment? Let's uh, start from there, in your estimate. We stand fairly high uh, because if you take the totality, the comprehensive uh, national power is a kind of a net uh, net assessment of, of our capabilities. 
But uh, there, I, I, I would say that if we, we do need today to develop the technologies, to develop the industrial capabilities, you know, it angers me when I hear talk that, you know, we are a services economy. Because that's a cop-out. <laughs>